Hey guys, Matt here from Rec Brewery. Happy Humber Wednesday. Just got done with the brew day. Just got done cleaning up actually. Just uh, closed everything up here in the garage. So this is getting a bit chilly tonight. And um, try to keep this section uh, brief so that we can get onto the brew day footage. Because I think I got a good 10 or 15 minutes worth of that. Um, this I'm gonna enjoy right now is um, game from Wally Feck. He sent me um, a couple of his beers as well as a couple of commercial ones. This one is the Little King's Cream Ale. And damn, dude, that's tiny. <laughs> it's a, what is this, seven, seven ounces? He sent me two of these. I guess it's so I can enjoy, you know, a full size uh, beer. But let's go ahead and crack, crack into this. We were talking about this beer when we brewed the, uh, oh, it's actually a twist off. Oops. Uh, we were talking about this when we did the um, pumpkin cream ale. And he said, you want to try a decent cream ale? Let me send you something from from where I'm at. So this is cool. I'm looking forward to trying this. Uh, this says it's 5.5% um, ABV. Um, yeah, not a whole lot of other information on there. It's um, brewed and bottled by the, uh, I can't actually read that, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, but yeah, anyway. So there you go. It doesn't quite fit, doesn't quite fit up the, or fill up the, uh, Muffin top glass, actually the glass is dirty. I've been using it all day. But nice, nice clear beer there. It's a nice uh, medium golden color. Smells like a cream ale. A little bit, I can smell a bit, a bit of the hops on there. I'm not gonna do like a crazy review on this thing. Just wanna check it out, so cheers. Yep, very nice. Clean, refreshing. Definitely something you can slam back, and I'll probably finish this before I get done with my uh, my intro here. So, thank you for sharing, Wally. Real nice, clean, refreshing beer. There's not a whole lot you can say about it. Just you know, just like a, it tastes to me like. You know, just just like your run of the mill cream ale. Uh, I, I'm not getting anything you know, fancy out of it. But it's real, real nice. Thank you. Um, so, brew day today. So we brewed the, um, it was a, it's going to be a double chocolate cherry stout. I actually forgot to put the lactose in there. That was supposed to be the cream portion of it. I just had it off to the side and totally forgot about it. But just to give you guys a rundown of the recipe, we got some, um, uh, just some regular two row in there. I tried out some chocolate rye. First time I've actually tried chocolate rye, so that's in here. Put some flaked oats in here, some wheat. It's well carbonated too. Uh, some crystal 60. Some uh, roasted barley. And I missed the lactose. Hops, I was actually supposed to just put a, a one shot in a bittering of uh, green bullet, but I didn't have enough. And that'll go to, t that'll teach you to, to, you know, keep track of your inventory. I thought it was, I thought I kept track of my inventory pretty well in Beer Smith, but apparently I must have forgot to subtract from a recipe that I used some of that on. So I decided to get a little bit creative and I used up some other um, little bits of hops I had sitting around, um, all put in bittering. I did some green bullets some Pacific Jade and some Centennial. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, when I, I used WLP004 Irish Ale. And when this is uh, ready for, you know, essentially the secondary stage, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, dry hop or, or infuse this with the um, the sweet cherry puree that I have at one of those real big cans that you get at your lo local Humber store. I'm going to put some uh, cocoa nibs in there and a vanilla bean. Um, probably not going to actually do a secondary. I'll probably do what I've been doing lately, which has worked really well. Uh, when this is done with primary fermentation, like when it's getting right to the end of that, I'll put all that stuff in then so it can finish out the primary fermentation and stay sealed. That way, when I go to do my closed transfer, it's never really been, um, you know, limiting the oxygen exposure to it. So that's really it for that. Um, the cool thing though, uh, I got my tablet here for this. Um, I'm actually, uh, it looks like I'm a little bit out of range. No, okay. It's, I noticed, I, I, I tried to tilt out this time, the, the raffle thing that I got um, this year. So I wanted to try that out in this beer. So I went ahead and dunked it in there and, um, you know, it's coming out pretty good. Um, I can, whoops, 
I can overlay a screenshot uh, as well so you can get a close up of that. But it's reading pretty accurate. Uh, the the refractometer said it was 1060 beer, which is what I was aiming for. Uh, the tilt says it's 1059. So pretty close. Um, the water profile on this guy that I was going for didn't do a whole lot to it. I put some gypsum, some uh, calcium chloride in there and some pickling lime to achieve a mash pH of 5.5, which I hit straight on. Um, calcium, I got that around 70. And uh, I was trying to keep some of the other numbers kind of middle of the road to low. So the sulfate, I, I did like a two to one with the, with the chloride. So um, the chloride, with, uh, I was aiming for 45 and the sulfate, I was aiming for 25. So I tried to keep those numbers fairly, fairly middle of the road to low. I didn't want to go crazy with things and I just kept the calcium amount uh, higher so that it can really chew into some of these malts. Um, we'll see how it turns out. So uh, yeah, so with that, I'm just gonna leave it here. Um, you know, this way that the video is not too long and you guys can enjoy the brew day video. Um, let me go ahead and we'll, we'll finish with this. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick shot of the sort of contraption I'm trying out the uh, pressure fermenting. It's I don't expect much out of it because it is the it is the brew bucket. And I know it doesn't hold much pressure. It's probably not even going to hold five PSI. Um, but I did set my uh, uh, my spunding valve to five PSI. So We'll see what happens. I'll check it out tomorrow and see see if it's you know if it works or not. So the beauty of this really is it's it's all plug and play the way I have it set up. So I have my my brew bucket here, and I have the um, you know the airlock. Uh, it's coming out to a a blow off tube, and I have a gas fitting on the end of this. And so I just hooked up my. Um, my spunning valve, which right now, of course, is reading zero. And it's just sort of propped there just so I can look at it. Um, the beer is sitting right now at about 72 degrees. So uh, I'm probably going to lower that, let it free fall its way to 70 so I can ferment this at the 70 temperature I wanted to. And, you know, if this doesn't work, all I have to do really is just disconnect this, I guess, um, fitting. And I'll just dump it into a, a jar of star sand. So... We will see if it'll actually hold 5 PSI. I don't have high hopes, because I know when I do the closed transfers, um, it seems to it seems to start to buckle. I'm trying to fix the camera here, sorry. <laughs> it seems to start to buckle at about 2 or 3 PSI when I'm doing the closed transfer, which you don't need much to transfer. You just need a little bit of gas in there to get the beer flowing. And you can, you can start to hear the air coming out of the gasket of the lid. So um, we'll see. I mean, if I can if I can get it 2, 3 PSI out of it, it's a semi-pressure fermenting um, test. If it, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, you know, I'll, I'll think about something. I can either ferment in kegs if I want to do an, an actual pressure transfer. I know a lot of guys do like a 10 PSI. I d doubt that'll hold that. So um, I don't want to go out and buy a new fermenter. But... We'll, we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I just, we're just testing this out on this beer. This beer is not really, you know, super important to be pressure uh, fermented from what I've read, at least of pressure fermenting. So uh, we'll just see what, what happens out of it. And I can course correct as needed. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now. So I'm gonna let you guys, the guys get to the brew day footage and we will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Have a happy Hoomber Wednesday. Have a good night. Cheers. Thank you, Wally. This is just what I needed after a busy brew day. See you guys. Cracking those grains. Brew day. up a little past uh, strike temperature. Pretty decent crush. Actually seems a little bit finer than normal. We have to uh, check the adjustment on this before next brew day. But it should be okay. Worst case, a little bit of rice holes. Never heard of anybody. 
All right, we're delivering the strike water now. Doing the underlet method got the clip set. Delivering about four gallons over. So it's gonna come in here to the bottom of the mesh done. It's gonna uh, come across and fill up all the grains. I got the brewing salts just kind of laying there on the top and we'll mix all that up here in a minute. And I just cranked down my temperature. Uh, so we got, we're aiming for a mash of 155. So we're delivering 160-ish uh, water just to make up the difference for the cold grains. And uh, this will all normalize once it gets going. So yeah, be back in a minute. All right, get us ready to start the mash. Just went ahead and stirred this up pretty good. Got a nice, rich, stouty smell to it already. So that's already ready to go. I just hooked up all of my hoses, so we're gonna go ahead and start the recirculation. All right, mash is going. Temperatures are normalizing here. I'm trying to get to a mash of 155 today. Just want this to be a nice full beer. It's got a good recirculation going on there. You can see the wort is uh, cleared out pretty good. Real nice and dark. All well, the lines are nice and dark. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, I just have the HLT. You know, the, the, the Herm coil is a little better than halfway submerged. Sometimes I top it off. Uh, today I think we'll be all right. We'll just use the water we have in there. And uh, I'll go ahead and start this mash timer here in just a minute. Just letting it kind of normalize. It doesn't hurt anything to have it going for a few extra minutes. I figured we would go ahead and do a review while we're uh, wrapping up the mash. This is my Dropkick Wreck. This is my change on the Dropkick Nate. I squirreled away a few bottles of this. I made it... Um, End of the summer, I think, last year. I put a few bottles aside just to see how it kind of goes over time. And I sent a couple of these out as well. See what other people think of it. But yeah, I'm ramp ramping up the temperature right now for a sparge out. Last 15 minutes of the mesh. Yeah, it looks pretty clear. Just the way I remember it before. It's got that sort of nice... Sorry about the... Uh, the lighting. It's getting dark out there and I don't want to have floodlights on with the door open and everything. People are probably wondering what's going on in here. Um, but yeah, it looks looks pretty good. It's got decent carbonation. It's got a nice finger head on the top of that. Uh, it's a nice sort of uh, deep straw color. Nice pale ale color. Still has uh, a decent hop presence on the, on the aroma. Man, I can't remember what I put in this. Uh, I did change the hops because I know... Um, the regular DKN uh, has the El Dorado, the Galaxy. Um, I did something totally different. I think I used Ella and Simcoe, maybe. I don't remember. But anyway, cheers. Yeah, <clears throat> it's toned down a bit from the way I remember it, but uh, still has a good hot presence in this. Yeah, very nice. That held up good over time. So this beer is probably, let's see here, it's probably a good six, seven months old, I guess now, something like that. This was like the end of the summer last year. So, real nice. Good to see that these hang on. This, I think I, I did I did do the closed transfer on this. So that definitely helps to preserve some of the flavor. I didn't do a pressure fermenting because I didn't have the ability to yet. Um, but I hope to get into that soon and see how that goes. But happy over Wednesday, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get back to the brew day. This looks like we got about five minutes left on the clock there. And then we're going to start sparging. All right, we're now sparging. Just filling up that kettle nice and slow. We have a good, got a good amount of uh, water above the green bed there. Coming in nice and slow. Got the flow rate dialed in. We got our clip. Set up here. Uh, let's see here. Yep, about there. We want to make sure the water level doesn't go above that. 
And then same thing here, we've got the water level on the HLT. We need to come down to about a four gallon mark. Left what's left over of the water in the HLT for sparging. And then I'll use the remaining water, the four gallons that's left in there for cleaning. So works out pretty good. And yeah. yeah. It'll be boiling soon. Once this thing comes up to the element, I'll go ahead and kick start the uh boil kettle. All right, we've reached our rolling boil. Got a good boil going there now. Sorry about the light. Let me see if I can turn this on here. There we go. Yep. And we've got our one and only hop addition for 60 minutes. Now it was supposed to be um let's see, what was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be uh, all green bullet, but I realized I didn't have <laughs> didn't have enough. So a little bit of a cocktail here. Here, these are all bittering hops, or can be used for bittering. So I went ahead and put in the rest of the green bullet that I had, uh, the rest of the Pacific Jade that I had, and then a little bit of the Centennial. So it should be an interesting uh, combination. It was just enough to bring it up to uh, 28 IBUs, which is what I was aiming for for this beer. So let's just see how it turns out. Next time, check your inventory. All right, with 15 minutes left on the clock, we're gonna add in the yeast nutrient and Whirlflock tablet. Let's put that straight in there. The last couple minutes left of the boil and I am sanitizing the chiller uh, with the hot wort and I'm letting it sort of circulate through the, the beer and get out any air bubbles um, so we don't have any Aeration, hot side aeration issues here at the end of the boil. A little trick I learned from Gary. And we're just playing around with the tilt uh, before we throw it in the fermenter. You know, we got some sanitizer in the fermenter getting ready to receive there, and we got uh, the tilt just sort of hanging out in some, some water. I just went ahead and calibrated it. So we're at 100, which is spot on. So it should be fun to see how this plays around. This is the, uh, this is the, the tilt that I uh, won over at our local homebrew shop, their raffle there. So, pretty cool little toy. Let's see how accurate it is. That's all she wrote. A little bit low on the volume. Uh, what do we got here? About five. I was trying to get five and a half, but I got five. That's okay. I'm good with that. All right, so we're going to a couple things here. So the yeast that they sent me at the local homebrew shop was a little bit out of date. It's uh, six months old. It's not that bad actually, but they gave me a free uh, second pack, so I'm just going to dump them both in there. Just to be on the safe side. So we're going to try this out for for the first time. It's been sitting in some star sand over there. And uh, in she goes. Alright, now we got our sanitized lid. I'm also going to test out this uh, pressure for this um, setup that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and put my normal blow off tube on here. See how well it works. 